Great job, Kent. Thank you. Loved it. So no means next opportunity. Let's keep that in mind. I think that's a wonderful thing to take away. Um, so don't take the no too hard and try again, right? Right. So, Melanie, how are Bondia. you? Come on. Bon bon, bon dia. <laughs> Welcome to ATEC. So Melanie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'm the manager of strategy planning and research at Aruba Tourism Authority. And for those of you who don't know what we do, we basically sell Aruba, position Aruba as the preferred um, vacation experience abroad. And what I do is we use data in order to create customer segments as well as be able to provide the customers with meaningful messaging about Aruba. Yes, exactly. So I know Melanie for a bit and it's not for no reason that I ask you to join the panel because the panel's numbers don't lie. I know you work with a lot of numbers and a, a lot of data. So tell us a little bit about, tell us a little bit about how the numbers, um, how do you use this and um, how do you plan for the next um, selling Aruba plot? Sure. So numbers are everything for us. It's at the core of all our strategic planning. We use the numbers to see how, if we are off tra target or on target, we use the numbers to, va to see how sati satisfied our customers are. We also look at various things, how much they're spending. So we use numbers in everything we do and it's at the core of our strategic planning. Great. And obviously you use it in a good way because Kent is here for the second time, right? Or third? This is your how many, how, this is your how much visit to Aruba? Third time. Third time, so the numbers work. Um, so you use <laughs> it well. <laughs> So Ken, tell us a little bit. You're in sales. We met um, briefly back in March, I believe. Yes. And um, I got to know you a little bit. You're into sales. So for you, I believe you, lose, you use a, a lot of numbers to eventually create your leads, make the sale. How important is numbers for you and how do you use this in, in, in what you do? Yeah, no, that's absolutely right, Tristan. At the very peak, it's about setting targets. And I, I often find that we need to know what our market potential is. How big is the market that we're pursuing? If we want to grow, what is, who are the number of organizations or people in, the, in the, our marketplace that are actually going to buy from us? And from that, we can start planning how big that opportunity is, the resourcing, and the investment we need to go after that market. So for me, the very, very beginning is establish those targets. And then from those targets, how many resources people do I need and how and then we work down into now let's go and talk to and have those conversations to generate those leads so for me the numbers are about establishing and validating the market size and then properly resourcing from a sales perspective those territories and quotas and then setting revenue goals and sales goals to those revenues so that's where I work I work at that level and down great now we are at a tech conference obviously it's called a tech um, how does technology impact the way you use numbers and data and how this is perceived or allow you to make your, set your targets and goals? Oh, absolutely. The technology, the marketing automation tools that are out there today make it easier for us to stay in contact with our prospects and we can do it using, uh, ro um, not robots, but automation that sends out timely emails, uh, incentives and offers. Uh, for example, if somebody responds to a, a particular email and clicks on a link to a certain page, that's an indicator to us that they might be interested in other services. So all of a sudden now we can look at the profile of that individual and say, they responded to this, they might be interested in this as well. And it helps us segment our market, our pr prospects and leads accordingly. So again, we can put the right resources and time to those that are most likely to buy. Does this also apply to you and the Aruba Tourism Authority? So technology, how does this impact your work? Definitely what um, you were saying is something that resonates with us. Um, of course, we have visitors from around the world, so we have to keep in mind the privacy, um, various privacy um, uh, uh, um, laws that are around the world. 
So when there are no privacy laws that uh, stop us from doing anything, for instance in the US, we do a lot of prospecting and segmentation and as well we are able to then see, okay, which is the best market to go after and most importantly, what do the, our visitors want? Awesome. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, I want to know if numbers is something that is something you do out of passion, you like numbers and data, or is this something you got into because of your work? I think numbers are everywhere. If I look at it personally, uh, if I want to buy something, I have to compare prices. I will compare prices. I will compare value. I will look at Instagram likes. I will see, I will look at numbers to give me an indication of how something is trending, if it's appealing or not. So for me, numbers are my passion. I do it oh, not only in my job, but I also it's my passion to look at and to also understand and create that complete picture um, of what's going on and as, as well as providing insights on how to move forward because that's the challenge. Get, have the numbers, move forward, look into the future, use these insights to become even better. So you, initially you like numbers and you have the perfect role for it right now. I do. <laughs> I'm super happy with my job. <laughs> Kent, do you like numbers or because you're a sales guy, you got into numbers? Oh, it's, it started with numbers. I loved math in school. Uh, my favorite number was number two. And, uh, and, and uh, zeros and ones, of course, uh, any of you who have computer science or science backgrounds, zeros and ones, and I chose the number two, so I, I feel like I'm, I belong in that group, so to speak. Um, but, uh, I, you know, and I think the techies in this group would agree that um, all problems of society and business can be solved with numbers. And that's literally true when you think of uh, um, uh, optimization software and, and what if scenarios and so forth, you know, you take formulas, apply numbers, and they tell us about where, where we're at in our organizations. But I'm going to share something that uh, Rosabelle said. It was about that radical smile. And one of the numbers, and, and this is a, just a really easy number for everybody in this organization, if you lead a team, you have people working under you, and you count on them doing a really good job being energetic and enthusiastic every day. I make a point to do a little bit of walk-by management with my team every day, and I always ask them individually, on a scale of one to five, how do you feel today? How are you feeling this morning? How confident are you in that you're organized and prepared to be successful today? And when I add up all those individual numbers, I get a really good pulse on how my team is going to do, but more importantly, how our customers are going to perceive us that day. So don't forget the human element of numbers and radical smile and uh, asking people how they're doing a pulse check on one to five, I think go hand in hand. I think I'm gonna start doing that right now. So <laughs> how do you feel from one to five? Give me a few numbers. Five. five. Right. On. Awesome, right on. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ken. So we noticed there's um, a lot of youth in the crowd. Yes, I love it. What would you recommend or what tips do you have for the youth when it comes to numbers, uh, math, and all of that? <laughs> Don't be scared of it. Learn to love it. Learn to see the value. It is the future. Technology is changing everything, it, from starting from smart technology. So just learn to love it. Really don't be afraid of it. Awesome. And I... Um you know, one thing that uh, the youth really appreciate is feedback. Performance, how are, we, how are you doing? And I know for a lot of us older people, um, we don't really necessarily look forward to doing performance reviews, but we remember back how important they were to us. So take the time to give really good feedback to our youth and to the young people here. Never be afraid to ask, I don't want to say an adult, but a supervisor is someone more senior to you, whether you're in a volunteer role, you're in an internship, or you're in a, uh, an employment role. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback. How am I doing? You will only grow through reinforcement and feedback, whether it be positive or negative. If all you hear is positivity, what opportunity do you have to improve? Seek out feedback from your supervisors, both good and bad, and take on that initiative for self-improvement. And a lot of times, 
It's in the feedback will be in the numbers because you didn't achieve this goal. What number do you want me to get to, for example? So don't be afraid to ask a number. What are, what are their expectations for you and how are you doing? Take that feedback and grow. Awesome. Great tip. I hope you guys are taking notes. So I want to close off with a final question to both of you. Um, and it's a bit looking into the future and wondering what might be without some stuff, for example, numbers. So <laughs> what would the world look like if we did not have numbers and data to do the work we're doing right now? <laughs> well, first of all, there would be no speed limits. Imagine driving on a road there was no number to tell me how fast I was going. Or worse, I didn't know how far I had to go to get to Baby Beach. Right? So a future without numbers, I think, is disastrous. <laughs> it is. Totally agree. It is something we would all work uh, with opinions. We would not know what the weather would be like. We wouldn't know anything, basically. So numbers don't lie. <laughs> they, 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 they can be manipulated. People can show <laughs> us the numbers they want us to see. But if you're in a leadership role in your organization, you make sure that you own the numbers. We are too quick as leaders to delegate some of the most important aspects of our business to others. You need to double check the facts. You need to check the data. I always believe, and I know Tristan, I think you're an example of this as well, we never ask anybody to do something that we're not willing to do ourselves as leaders. And uh, it's important to model that with our youth and take responsibility. If somebody in your organization didn't show up today, it's your turn to step in and, and make sure that that function works if it's critical to your success. And uh, so my, my point to the leaders here, own the numbers, validate the numbers, hold the people accountable to those numbers, and make sure you communicate your goals and, and on an, uh, frequently so everybody knows that they're on track and they're making progress. I think it's really important today. Are we making progress? Are we going in the right direction? And there are certain numbers that are important in your organization, and it's very important to make sure that everybody sees them. You as a leader communicate it, but again, everybody in the organization should know where you stand. And that comes back to the success stories. What is it that we do really good? Who are we going after? And are we on track to achieve that goal, that outcome? And there's no greater feeling than being ahead or to being on track. You'll have greater employee satisfaction. You'll retain your best employees. And most importantly, you'll attract the best people because that feeling in your organization that you're on track and you're growing, that's an amazing feeling to have as a leader, isn't it, Tristan? That's, I think you're right. I can't disagree with you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Melanie and Kent. Our pleasure. Thank Our you for pleasure. having us.